Hey, I'm Similar Outskirts. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to make color based sounds using a kick drum like this. The song you just heard is my latest track called Shockwave, which came out the other day on Rushdown. The song is part of a compilation album called Color Bass Volume 2, which has a bunch of bright and colorful tunes from talented artists. I highly recommend you go check it out using the link in the description below. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to keep up with more content. Alright, let's dive right into the session. So starting off, this is the kick that I used. And using that, I made one of the layers of this whole sound here. So starting off at the top, we have this main sound here. Which is made up of a bunch of different things. Gotta turn all of these off. Uh, vocoder, Jesus Christ, there are so many effects here. So the first thing I did with the kick sample is I put it into this sampler down here so I can use MIDI instead. So here's what the sound first sounds like without any of the effects. Sounds pretty good, right? So the first effect that I use here is an auto filter. And what I do is I have this bandpass filter on it and I'm sweeping the frequency up and down to give it a very vowel-y effect. The second effect I have here is an erosion. What's really cool about erosion is that it can give any sound this nice crispy texture, even though it didn't have any in the first place. At the bottom here, we have three different modes, noise, white noise, no, wide noise, and sign. Essentially what these do is that they take the input signal and they modulate it with three different sounds. There's a lot of nitty gritty details that go into this, so if you want to learn more about it, I highly recommend looking at the Ableton manual. Whoa! So for this particular sound, I use the sine wave mode. I typically like to use sine mode with erosion because I like the down sample bit crushy effect that it gives the sound I'm working with. <laughs> Probably the most important part about this sound is the vocoder over here. A vocoder is essentially an effect that changes one sound by using the signal of another sound. So in this case, in order to give the sound a more chord-like glittery texture, I use this super saw down here as the carrier signal. So let's take a look at this super saw real quick. The super saw patch I'm using isn't really anything too special, it's just too super saw. I mean, it's just two saw waves and they're very detuned. Pretty standard stuff. And on its own, it sounds like this. You can see here that I wrote pretty big fat chords here to really fill up the sound. So now with the vocoder, it sounds like this. You can hear that the sound is getting there, but in order to add more choppiness to the sound, I decided to add this arpeggiator down here. The arpeggiator tool will turn any chord that you write into an arpeggio. So now with the arpeggiator on, the super saw sounds like this. And now with that, the main sound sounds like this. I think using an arpeggiator is a really neat way of adding different textures to sounds when you're vocoding things. Probably one of the biggest things that you can do is change the style down here in the arpeggiator to change up the texture. Right now I'm just using this up down style, but I'm sure you can use different styles here to make the sound seem a little more different. For example, this is what it sounds like with pinky up. And maybe if you wanted converge, it'll sound like this. I want to note that whenever you're using the vocoder, it's really important to change some of the settings here so that you can give the sound a different timbre. I think one of the main things that you can change about a vocoder is this formant knob here, which will shift the sound up and down in a way. Moving forward, I add another erosion just to give a little bit more high end to the sound. Now I add a utility to add 15 decibels of gain. 
And moving forward, I have this saturated OTT rack that I like to use on a lot of sounds. It's essentially just an OTT with a saturator as the, you know, the name implies. For the OTT, I just have the amount set to 80%, which is a lot, but I think it works well for this sound in particular. And for the saturator, I turn the drive up pretty high with a soft sign algorithm and a soft clipper on. You can hear that the OTT and the saturator really start to fatten up the sound so it sounds more whole and powerful. I have an EQ at the end here so I can cut out all the crappy parts. And finally, I have a utility here to make the sound a little bit more mono. That's pretty much it for the main sound up here, but there are a couple little tiny layers underneath it all that really make the sound complete. First, I have this little foley layer of a bunch of keys jingling to give the sound a bit more of an attack. In addition, I have this percussion layer to give even more attack to the sound. And finally, I have this little growly layer underneath it all. I think it's important to note that you don't really need these specific sounds that I'm using in order to achieve a similar result. I think it's more important to understand the concepts underlying it. Just note that the Foley layer and the percussion layer are giving a sort of attack and transient to the sound. And the growly layer you put underneath is just to fill up the sound more. And finally, to make things a little more interesting as the track goes on, I wrote different chords throughout it. And there you have it. That's how I turned this kick drum into this. All right, I think I'm done. Oh, that's a wrap. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, I really recommend you go check out not only my new track, Shockwave, but also the new Color Bass Volume 2 album, because there's a lot of really great music there. If you have any suggestions on future videos to make, please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more content, and follow me on Twitter to stay up to date. If you'd like to support me further and receive rewards, please check out my Patreon below. Later!